Welcome back, Scott Parker, to the Championship, which means another year of debate over this guy. Is he a good manager or is he not? Is there a more divisive football manager, a more opinion-splitting, Marmite bloke in the dugout than bloody Scott Parker? We seem to have had this chat a million times on the channel and we're going to do it all over again because not only is Scott Parker back, He's got himself another parachute job at Burnley. Year one parachute team freshly relegated from the Premier League. Therefore, we expect them to be in the automatic promotion race, which means Scott Parker could pull off a third promotion in three seasons as a championship manager. Now, that sounds like a pretty bloody good record, doesn't it? So why all of the kind of questions? Well... Let's wind this back because this has followed Scott Parker right since day one in the championship. I think if memory serves, he kind of took on Fulham at the end of the season and went down with them and then got the job full time um, before they kicked the ball in the championship. And I think I was at maybe the first Fulham home game there and it didn't feel good. The fans weren't buying the ponderous build up and um, maybe, maybe some of Parker's communication skills and the way he sort of carried himself, weren't necessarily um, winning the Fulham fans over. We got the big stoppage for COVID and then Fulham with Mitrovic, Cavaliero, Nokar, all set up to get promoted, to be fair, won the playoffs in extra time in the final. And Scott Parker was promoted. Some Fulham fans, quite a lot of Fulham fans argued, in spite of the manager... And it was mainly due to the, you know, a parachute team with a great squad. And maybe the players had got them up. Who knows? I wonder what a funny experiment if we could see another manager with a similar group of players at Fulham in the championship. Hmm. We'll come on to that in just a second. Um, Parker went up into the Premier League. Bit of an abject relegation. Bit of a fallout with the Khans. Out he goes. We're not judging Scott Parker as a Premier League manager here in this chat. We're judging him as a championship manager. So we put that to one side. But Parker is back and he's got himself another parachute job. Year two at Bournemouth this time around. I think it was Jason Tindall, wasn't it? After Eddie Howe went and Bournemouth got to the playoff semi-final, didn't they? And lost to Brentford, who finally made it through after losing to Parker's Fulham the season before. And literally, guys, literally rinse, repeat. Bournemouth, brilliant start to the season. They flew out of the blocks. Funnily enough, with Fulham, now managed by Marco Silva, with quite a few of the players who were there before, utterly tearing it up, playing electrifying, um, attacking football, breaking goal-scoring records left and right. We'll park that for a second. Bournemouth, though, into second place. And he's going to make it over the line again. The narrative this season was that they were faltering. They were falling away. And Bournemouth went hell for leather in the January transfer window and did the old Glasgow Rangers and Celtic thing in Scotland they used to do back in the day where you just bought up all your um, opposition's best players. Fulham, Fulham. Uh, Bournemouth did that in the January window. I remember it was Dembele and Lowe and who came in um, on loan? Phillips. Seemed to buy about seven players. To be fair to Parker, he didn't actually use many of them. Kiefer Moore as well. He definitely used Kiefer Moore because he scored the winning goal against Nottingham Forest, who came like an absolute train at the end of the season. Bournemouth held them off. Bournemouth got promoted. Scott Parker, two promotions on the CV. And again, Bournemouth fans are saying to me, Ben, he's got us up. Fair enough. We weren't great to watch. It was a little bit fraught. And we feel like we've done it in spite of him. And exactly the same conversation happens again. Um, if only we had evidence of another Bournemouth manager with the same squad uh, managing his team. Again, we do. Uh, Parker goes up to the Premier League, has a bit of a rant and a rave, gets hammered by Liverpool, gets sacked. In comes Gary O'Neill. And comfortably, um, Bournemouth survive. And they're still up in the Premier League, kind of thriving now with... Um, Iriola. So, look, the Parker debate, I get it. I really, really get it. Um, what I don't buy is this weirdness that a lot of football fans have about Gerard, Lampard, Rooney, Parker, and this kind of derangement about these 
um, kind of young managers who are great players from the golden generation. There's a lot of angst against those people. If you've just got a weird derangement against that, then I can't say anything to you. You're not going to like any of those managers ever. And you're going to be predicting Parker and Rooney to both get sacked this season. Lampard to never get a job again. Gerard to kind of see his uh, career out managing in Saudi Arabia. Now, we do get the binary people on one side who say, well, Ben, it's a results business and he's got two promotions. And to that, I say, well, OK, you know, you can make that argument. It is a, a binary argument that if we're only going to debate through that sphere, you, you, you can't argue against that, can you? It, it does obfuscate and remove all of the nuance from the situation. You know, you can say the, the most important thing is the promotion. I think uh, to say the only important thing is the promotion would be a little bit disingenuous, but I'll accept that argument. And by God, if he does it a third time with Burnley, then... You know, this guy is just going to be a championship promotion special. He's going to be up against Daniel Farker, who we were saying uh, this about last season, going for the third um, uh, sort of championship promotion. Could be interesting. Maybe they'll both get it done. Um, look, I understand the complaints from both Fulham and Bournemouth fans about the football. I understand this kind of slightly odd, eccentric, intense manner, sometimes with the fans and in interviews and with the press and with the media and whatnot. I get that. I might have heard a thing or two from players as well that that kind of transmits into the um, into the dressing room and into the team talks and whatnot. But again, anyone could just fire back, yeah, you got promoted twice, Ben. Um, I do think that revealing thing I've mentioned, that um, Fulham with Marco Silva, and look, not completely the same squad, but I mean, if you take Mitrovic as the kind of canary in the coal mine that, Parker kind of fell out with him, didn't want to use him, didn't get a tune out of him. And then Silva kind of built his team around him and he broke every record in the world. Um, I, I don't know whether that um, does kind of debunk the argument that we'll never know what a different manager will do. And then Gary O'Neill in the Premier League as well with Bournemouth as well. So um, look, we're looking into realities that absolutely didn't happen. And you can have your say in the uh, comments. Look, no need to insult the bloke, but it's a good debate as to, you know, what, what is this guy? Is he, is he just a smooth talker who's got some good jobs and found his way over the line? It can't be that simple. It can't be that easy to get a team promoted from the championship, even with the parachute payments, which he's got once again this season with Burnley. This will be fascinating because Vincent Company's Burnley certainly in the championship, not at Premier League level, uh, were lovely to watch. And they were methodical, played through the first, thirds, excuse me, passed the ball to death. And in some ways, maybe more efficiently and pleasing on the eye and slightly faster if it's that simplistic, did play probably like Scott Parker wanted Fulham and Bournemouth to play. But I don't know. Did he get 70% of the way, the way there? 80% of the way there? Maybe, and you can argue that we always say on this channel, a competent parachute team, particularly a year one parachute team, and 70% of the way there is probably competent, will be good enough to get over the line. It was convincing with company at Burnley, wasn't it? He got 100 points and won the damn title at a canter at Easter. Miles clear. They were way better than everyone else. Um, they'll be bringing back some of the players that did that. For Parker at Fulham, convincing? No. Absolutely not. And OK, even with the COVID interruption, were the West Brom team that finished second that year under Slaven Bilic that good? No, they completely flolloped over the line, didn't they? So convincing with Fulham? No. With Bournemouth, did the door open up? Maybe. I think it possibly did, didn't we? If we look at the playoff contenders there, it opened up for Forest and we had Luton in there and Huddersfield, um, Sheffield United kind of found their way in in their first season of parachute payments as well. So... Um, look, I get the argument. He hasn't been convincing. I get the argument. He's got the job done. Where do you stand on the Scott Parker debate? And if you're a Burnley fan, do you give a flying you-know-what if he's in the top two with the Clarets again this season? Scott Parker is back. Let the debate begin in the chat. Is he going to do it with Burnley? And are you binary? He gets the job done or teams get promoted in spite of him. Let me know your thoughts in the comments.